If you've clicked, you probably want to get good at Fortnite Mobile, but want to do it efficiently, as fast as possible. I respect that, which is why, as a 5 plus year Fortnite Mobile Pro, we'll be dropping tips in this video that you can use to grind more effectively and be the best player you can be in a very, very short amount of time. These include what modes to practice and videos to watch to improve, good devices and HUDs to use, and even some secret methods that you may have not seen in other videos. And if you watch the whole video, these tips should help you learn the game fast. On a minor note, while device tips in specific are more oriented towards the Android community, you can apply the gameplay ideas and practice strats to iOS as well. I know you EU iOS players are trying to get you the grind and I see you, I got you. Regardless of device, these improvement strategies should be able to help you get better and improve your game. Without further ado, let's get in the modes to practice, which I believe are best to be solo ranked, scrims, and 1v1s against players better than you. Well, the grandeur of being elite, champion, or unreal means pretty much nothing nowadays. I still believe solo ranked is the best way to simulate fights, as it is one of the easiest ways to fight players of all skill levels. Bad, good, and Peterbot occasionally happens here and there. And in tournaments, you'll fight all of these types of players eventually. And ranked is, in my opinion, the easiest way to do it. This is also the best place to practice good game sense habits, right hand peaks, offensive and defensive fighting, applying pressure with spraying the opponents, knowing when to chop the opponent, knowing how to use the new items in the season, trying them out, etc. If you make a mistake in this environment, especially at higher ranks, pretty much elite and plus, you will usually be punished. So playing on your A game is absolutely necessary. It'll be easier to play intentionally for that reason. If you want to compete with these players, you gotta play well, especially when starting out on improving. Seeing the mistakes you made while playing ranked is also easier when you're solo, as you have nobody else to depend on, it's all on you. This makes watching the games back, realizing your own personal mistake, as 95% of the time you've done something wrong. Yes, sometimes you lag out, yes, sometimes it is the Fortnite server itself, but usually the mistakes on you. For scrims, though you may not see a lot of people grind them, if you want to get better at endgame, one of the most important skills to place well, then this is how. Even if it's at a basic level, say open to everyone, the quality you get from still practicing is good and worthwhile to pursue. In Fortnite, you may not be able to play a large amount of tournaments, which is usually the only other way to practice realistic endgames. Scrims fill this void and are usually stacked enough to create the environment of high elo players, or at least stacked games in general. Lots of builds and perceived chaos that you'll find in competitive lobbies. Your device performance during this time is also usually different. I know there's, there's those M4 users out there, but that's the exception to the rule. You may not be able to do everything that you can whilst in an early or mid game fight as FPS is lower and input delay is usually higher. This makes things like how you go for refreshes, conserving mats, and finding good layers and rotates important, which scrims teach. For the major regions, the possibilities are easy to find. At a beginner level, EU has noble open scrims and elite scrims, and NA has manu scrims, which are more stacked to practice for FNCS and high elo lobbies and solo victory cups on the one like or two days they host it, and NA opens, which is less stacked but way, way more available. Scrims happen more often, so it's good to start practicing habits there. If I recommend anything to improve, it is to play scrims. Though, they can be boring as days. I understand waiting until the sixth zone doing absolutely nothing productive, especially when you die before the end game starts can be hard. They are so worth it. Push through the dream. You guys might be able to play vital scrims or division one, two, three nobles one day. Now, for what may seem harder for some people, but also the easiest method to improve, fighting at least, creative 1v1s against players better than you. While stomping that one Nintendo Switch friend 10 2 may be fun, putting time towards that halts improvement, as you may be repeating habits you need to change, maybe not hitting a proper right hand peak, not blocking your angles, etc. 
Like solo ranked, fighting good players will expose these mistakes you are making that you may not see while you're fighting the bad players and force you to work on them. When you fight these better players, you'll probably lose, but where your weaknesses lie will be exposed and these are what you need to VOD review on and fix to become a better player. Well, it will be hard to begin with as who likes to lose? Losses are what you need to learn and improve, and if you can consistently work to fix mistakes, improvement is almost ensured. For beginners and intermediate players, you should be able to find better PC and console players in speed realistics, 1v1 zone wars, and box fights. As you improve and need sweatier opponents, scrim cords will do the trick. For NA players, I can personally vouch as GBL scrims and NA opens, as I've fought but good players from both, and even the official Fortnite server includes some sweats here and there. Might just be worth a shot. Now for the next section and what I've seen many mobile players overlook in the past and stay stagnated in skill for that reason, what to watch to improve. In my comments, the question of Persham, Persham, can you coach me? Is so consistent. But what have I told you? Through watching the right gameplay and teachers of the said gameplay, you can improve yourself. Ooh. For the former, it's definitely worth to watch console and PC pros. Both have effectively learned the game and are doing these strategies they are for a reason. They work. Their vids can set a ground for what moves you need to practice, how to fight players, and even how to fight and game, which you can then implement into your own game. But this gameplay can be hard to understand at first. This is where the educational videos come in. For beginners, I recommend both Vibin, Jivin, and Dala. Jivin has a pro's level of understanding. He actually made grand finals a few seasons ago, if you know you know, and explains fighting and endgame techniques in a really clear and easy to understand way. Dala also has this understood and includes tips to improve mechanically as well through building and editing and the process itself to become better at comp go pro. Now, once you've got to hang a competitive, we enter Destiny's Jesus, DJ. I'm not talking just DJ, shout out to him, GOAT, but Destiny's Jesus. A lot of you may be familiar with Destiny and I am here to tell you that his videos are quality, class, masterclass. If you apply what he is saying, though it sounds simple, you will improve. He breaks down what pros are doing in a simple to understand manner while their technique may be harder to replicate, the fundamentals learned from the videos can still help so, so much. As a paid option, Destiny also offers the Solos Masterclass and Solo Superstars. The former is good for getting a grasp on how to play endgame and rotate midgame in solos, as well as give direct insight into how pros play. Present as well are routines and strategies to improve mechanics for a one-time payment of 25 USD. It may sound like a lot, but for the value you're getting constantly, literally every season something new is added, it's worth it, I think. Solo superstars cost significantly more, but may also be extremely worthwhile for some. In the program, it includes live coaching from both well-known pros, I think they did one with Muzz a few days ago, and coaches such as Destiny's Jesus, Psychoma and Blood X, uh, that one guy who coached Clicks and Mongrel, I think, I don't know. With purchasing this, you also unlock all the master classes and with a lifetime purchase. Any master class Destiny Jesus may add in the future, at the filming of this video, a fighting master class may be coming soon. The rates start at $50 a month and $350 for lifetime access, so basically 7 months lifetime access. If you have the right device and really, really, really want to go pro, like I'm talking PC earnings and mobile earnings, the Masterclass or Superstars can help you substantially. To join, link is in the description. Well, practicing and watching videos to learn are important, device and HUD are more so. What you play on can make this process significantly easier, whether interpreting what's going on around you or being able to react through aim, builds, and edits. So, what are good examples of either? If you really want to compete on Fortnite, device matters. Ideally, your device can run at least 60 FPS, attempting to understand stacked end games, or fight sweaty PC players on 30 FPS. Good luck, and with the time you're going to put in, it's probably not worth playing on that. 
From what I've seen, if the device can hold at least a consistent 60 in game, competing is possible. If you want to become good at fighting and competitive on a PC level, like play well against them, I definitely recommend 90 FPS devices and 120 FPS devices if you have access to them, wink wink EU iOS. There is a reason that console and PC pros play on more or less 120 plus FPS. There is way less of a strain on performance and understanding the game just becomes so, so much easier. Now, what devices do I recommend? For native, the Samsung Tab S9 runs solid. I can most definitely play on it consistently in terms of input delay and performance, like TrueVouch. In the States, it's going for about 700 retail value at the time of filming of this video, but pro tip, if you can get the device open box, it's usually way, way cheaper. I think I saw a price for like 500 the other day. In the same range of price as 650 is the Red Magic 9 Pro. I preached no preacher this many times and it is all reliable. Haven't seen a single negative comment from it yet. If you get this device, I can ensure you'll improve. It's a different beast, different level, different realm. A pro player on that device is Martos on mobile. If you want to see a peak level player mechanically, he is your guy. Both devices are consistent and reliable bets for a good Android device. So if you want to experience Android at its peak, that is how. For HUDs, my general advice are simple yet effective tips. Ideally, you should be playing three finger claw or more. As I've said before, while two finger may seem manageable, doing all those actions with freaking thumbs or two fingers, virtually a requirement of playing well, is significantly harder. Three plus fingers makes each finger have to click less buttons, thus making the process of doing multiple things at the same time easier. While nine and ten finger claws are possible, I also recommend limiting fingers to eight at max. This is as in Chapter 2 Season 3 and in other mobile games, this is usually the highest successful players go. I don't really, really see any crazy 9 finger or 10 finger players quite yet, but you never know, who knows. The why, I don't know, but those HUDs are more grounded in general for improvement. Someone's tried them and gotten better more or less. It's also important to learn crosshair editing and makes mechanical moves so much more possible. As I've explained in a previous video, you need the edit, toggle, and reset button on every mode and an actual crosshair edit button in your edit mode. With some practice, this should help most both build and edit faster. Now, where does one get inspiration for HUDs? I plan to be releasing some best settings videos for phone and tablet pros to give inspiration from 3 to 8 fingers in terms of HUDs. If you're interested, go check them out. Whenever I do drop them, I'll link them in the description. Now, for settings themselves, like sensitivities and stuff, I have a whole video dedicated to finding the right settings for you. It's old, but it's gold. Eight minutes of crazy, crazy knowledge, and the ideas still apply today. Check it out in the description. I believe you'll learn something from it. Now, for the secret training methods. This is where things get interesting. Shout out to the ones that made it here. Though not really mentioned, tips from this section may help you improve even faster than everything above and could be that little push, that little nudge to get you ahead of the curve. The first one is practicing mechanics and potentially even fighting and battle royale on higher ping. On higher ping, decision making and mechanics are more important. This is as you have less opportunity to get away with bad plays, so react slower. Let's use a generic in-game example. Say you do an editor peek and it is straight in the opponent's face. Bad edit on lower ping. You may still shoot before he can return fire, but on 60 plus, 70 plus ping, GG's only, back to the lobby. For that reason, it is more important and easier to stay intentional and correct these mistakes. You have to pay attention on this ping. And note moves the enemy is doing where you're standing in the box, high ground retakes, yada yada, which is necessary and helpful for improvement. Despite this, I only recommend this method to people who can play on 100 ping or less on their off region. After that point, it may become extremely difficult to keep up with the opponent, thus both being demotivating and not the best practice for a lot. 
Sometimes though, there are moves you literally can't perform well on high ping. In specific, those super fast edits. Can't Jimmy pop you on high ping. Rather than speed, you're going to want to practice edit accuracy on high ping. This will make edits and usually builds as well flow faster when you get back to your lower ping. As a direct recommendation, said this a lot, said this rap a lot, the Raiders mechanics training map V4 is what helped me, in specific, the edit towers into peace control tunnels. The edit towers are for flowing, trying to hold that consistency of hitting the edits and not missing them. You want to try to miss as few edits as possible while doing this, don't worry about speed. After finishing these, go into the peace control tunnels. These scenarios are usually effective in game and thus good to practice. Like you'll probably do some of these in game. After a few successful reps, you can switch out between different ones. I have no specific ones to recommend. They all help in a way. When you're done, what you do next, all your choice. Whether free building on higher ping is the plan or going back to your region, edits should feel much easier to perform as you've gotten used to playing on them with more server delay. In my personal opinion, the plays you make and accuracy in builds, edits, and your aim are more important than the speed you perform them at. You could be the fastest builder of all time, but if you don't know how to use the skills, GG. High ping is a strict but solid teacher for improving them and it may be worth a shot to practice on it. The next secret, though a little shorter, is slightly lowering or increasing your touch sense. Speed or precision training. Speed training, as you may guess, is the latter. Lowering your sense by a little, depending on how high, like I guess from 0.05 to 0.1, then practicing mechanics with that sense. Playing on a slower sense requires more finger movement, so when you switch back, the finger movements will feel like less, thus helping increase your speed. The same can be done vice versa for precision training. As the name suggests, your crosshair may feel a little less precise when building, and this helps with crosshair control. Learning how to control a sense higher than your own will make your normal sense feel easier to use in comparison, easier to control. And if you can get adjusted with the precision training sense, likely more accurate. I usually do both here and there while warming up. I recommend doing this for no more than 30 minutes. Tune to whatever you need to improve. If it's edit and build speed, speed training, crosshair placement and precision, precision training, as you could probably tell. Finally, the most important secret out of these three staying consistent over time with your practice yes it is cliche yes it sounds boring but i cannot stress how helpful this practice is many players try to approach improvement as a all-in-one deal forcing improvement all at the start getting everything done now wanting everything now no 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 well this may be really helpful for a few days improvement is not a quick fix it is a journey consistency compounds and a habit you develop. Why are PC pros the best? They play every day, whether scrims, 1v1s, even zero builds for the devoted ones, and that practice is hours, like four plus hours every day. They're in the game from season start to season end, no days off. This is needed to build good thinking and habits, which are significantly harder to do through only practicing for one day. Obviously, you don't got to do all that to get just like a decent Fortnite mobile level, but I'd recommend setting at least one hour and 30 minutes to two hours a day to improving. How you manage that time, just work on the weaknesses and focus mainly on fixing one thing, your one weakness that is most profound for each session. It may be mechanic related, game sense mistakes, end game, focus on that one thing then find a new mistake and go on. Mistake, fix, mistake, fix, repeat, more or less. If you can do this for two months straight, three months straight, four months straight, yes, it is a while, but you should surely improve in some aspect of the game, surely. With that being said, hopefully you walk away from this video with something new learned on the path to becoming a Fortnite mobile maestro. You're a real one, a winner, and winners win. Something like that. I mean, you watch the whole video. Let me know if there's any specific topics you want me to hit on in a future educational video, talk about and try to explain. And I'll try to do that, whether through my own gameplay, other mobile pros gameplay, ooh, Fortnite mobile VOD reviewing sounds fun, or even PC pro gameplay. Who knows what the future holds? And that is all I got. P out, peace.